Hey friends, welcome back. By now you've probably noticed that Ableton has stepped into its 12.2 update, which brings a lot of new features, one of which is a new device that you can download over at the Ableton website. Today, I want to show you how you can supercharge that device and your workflow. There's a lot of already really helpful videos on YouTube on how you can use the device, but in this episode, you're really gonna see some new things, including why my device looks a little bit different to yours. That's coming at the end of the video, so don't go anywhere. Let's dive into it. Just in case this is your first time with the device, let me give you a quick overview, but use the timestamps at the bottom of the screen so you can find what's most helpful for you. I like to think of this device as a chord rack. Similar to the drum rack, Ableton has chosen sounds or chords to fit each pad, but they're not necessarily in song order, which confuses some users. So when you click these pads, you will hear different chords. And when you play it on your MIDI device, you'll also be able to choose just one note to play an entire chord. We're gonna make this more musical in just a bit, but let's continue with the overview. In the bottom left, you can tilt these chords so that you can hear more of the lower notes of the chord or the higher notes of the chord. 0% means that everything's gonna be played at the same velocity. We can invert these chords, pulling this down means that the higher notes are gonna be transposed lower. And inverting this upwards means that the lower notes are gonna be transposed higher. We can also set our strum amount. And what the articulation of that strum is. So basically how the strum is performed. If you wanna edit any of this, you can open this window. Don't forget you won't see this menu or this menu just yet, but in this window, you can actually modulate some of those articulations. So this is our articulation editor. And if we create a random variation, I like to go with somewhere between 20 and 40 to get a nice humanistic feel. Lovely. Now let's get to the fun stuff. Let's look at how we supercharge your workflow. When I first started with this device, I was excited, but I was met with the same kind of confusion as other users. A lot of you sounded off in the Discord or the Patreon community. It doesn't necessarily make sense to me what chord choices I should make. As I go from C to C sharp to D to D sharp, to E, it's not always in song order. Now, if you have a bit of an ear for music, your workflow probably looks like this. And quite quickly, in a roundabout way, you'll be able to find some chords that work. But if you don't have music theory, you're kind of a little bit lost. Something that you might find more beneficial is actually dragging that instrument to a new track, setting it to in, and then from the top input, selecting that expressive chords track. I've named mine expressive chords so it's easier to find, but yours might be called something different. And then setting that device to record in. From here, you should be able to hear the sound on that second track. And then from here, I'll set a scale device on the expressive chords track. I then click this button here, which will set your key of the scale device to your universal key of the project. So whatever's set up here will correspond down here. And then I record in on both tracks. Wonderful. And then look at this. What I see here are the actual chords that I'm playing. If you're a producer that collaborates with other musicians, you now have a better vocabulary of what you're doing in the piano roll. So you can choose a bass line that goes along with your chords, or you can select all and transform them so you can create a better melody. This is still fairly basic, so let's step it up a notch and show you how you can go one step further. I've put my electric instrument back onto that same expressive chords track. Into a fresh part of the project, I'm gonna drag a chord sample, something that I wanna make my own. Here's Here's what we've got. A fairly popular sample on Splice amongst lo-fi producers. What I want to do is switch this up a little bit. So we're going to right click it, convert harmony to new MIDI track. This is normally like 80% accurate. What we're going to do from here is delete our sample and go into that MIDI clip. Select all of the notes, command A, and then come over to the left hand side. Make sure that scale is still in keeping with your universal scale. Then we're gonna choose fit to scale right here. And you'll see that a couple of the notes that are falling outside of the scale bounce into place. 
This is still super messy and I want to make this chord. So I'm going to select all of the notes again, shift command U and quantize them to a quarter note margin. So now they're falling a little bit more uniform. Command A once again, set this to eighth notes. This will originally say fit to time range. I'm going to select eighth notes and then set length. Now all of our notes are the same exact length. We now have clusters of notes that make up chords. Some are going to be messier than others, but amongst here, you're going to be able to find some chords that you like. I like the first eight chords that are here. So what I'm going to do from here is actually change the length of bars that I have to two. Command A and then select legato. This is going to bump all of my notes up against one another. You want about four chords inside one bar. So if your notes are too long, you can always hit this divide two, or if your notes are too short, you can always hit times two to lengthen them. Mine are the right size, so I'm going to leave this here and minimize this window. What I can do here is drag that up to my expressive chords device and then open this window. With this clip highlighted, I can then import those chords. As long as there's no spaces and they're bumped up next to each other, you should have imported eight chords. Now I can play those on the keyboard. Once again, you can choose a scale device and hit that scale aware button if you're worried about it falling out of key. This is the same scale, so we're all safe here. What I like to do is map some of these options to my MIDI keyboard, something like invert, I'll press command M, choose that invert function, and then choose a pad on my keyboard. I'll come up to the top left and set minimum to maybe minus one and maximum to one or zero. I've noticed that some of the chords inside this progression are a little bit too high for my liking, like this one and this one. So I'd like to invert that down a step, but I want to do that in real time as I'm playing this out. So now I can hit that pad on my MIDI keyboard and it's going to bounce between minus one and zero, which means I can start in this place, play my next chord. Let's record something in, see how it sounds. Wonderful. I'm just going to quantize this chord. I didn't really like this chord here. So why don't I change it up a little bit by just inverting this note here and maybe this note here. And I think I'll get rid of this last chord as well. Let's elongate this one. See what it sounds like. Quantize this. Not too bad. And if you liked that chord progression and want to use it in future, then all you need to do is select this device or group these and either save that one device or come over to here where the save icon is to save the group. And we can call this Will's Expressive B minor progression. Okay, so now you've got a basic overview of the device. You've seen how you can import chords. You've got a couple of workflow options and seen how you can assign the macros to your various MIDI devices. But what about these two menus that I have here? Let's get to it. Oh, must I remember, this video is sponsored by DistroKid. I release all of my music with DistroKid and I have new music coming out real soon. One of the things that I'm super grateful for is the fact that I get special access to Spotify, TikTok, Apple, Tidal, and YouTube accounts with my DistroKid membership. That means I can claim those personal accounts, make sure that they're all in keeping so all of my music looks nice and professional. And on that professional front, I make sure to promote myself using their hyperfollow tools and their promo cards. That means that my audience can pre-save my music before it comes out and post my release I can market it professionally as well. There's lots of descriptions in the there's lots of discounts in the description. Let's get back to the episode. So one of the first things that I noticed when I drag in this device is if you went up to Max for Live and then typed in expressive chords, there were lots of different presets for this device. If I go to Soul Ballads and drag that in and I need that electric device as well, then I would have presets for this Soul Ballads here. but not all of the chords sounded nice. Not necessarily gonna go from that nice C9 sus4 to this F minor nine. Kind of gross. And I kind of wanted a menu to be able to cycle through that so I didn't have to come up to the Max for Live tab. That's when I found Ableton Drummer's channel and if you aren't subscribed to him, please do support. And I found out that he made a Max for Live device with a menu. I took that menu option and just applied it to the top left of this device. His is down in the modulation tab and that allows us to choose all of the different presets. We can go from techno, 
over to Lo-Fi R&B with just a hit of a button now. With the help of valued community member Slick P, he helped me dive into this and create another menu that allowed us to import my own presets that I'm going to continue making for the Patreon community. Don't worry, all you've got to do is sign up to the Patreon. This is completely free and I'm going to keep adding chords to this week by week. Right now there's 20 presets at the time this video is uploaded, but depending on what week you have, there might be hundreds. So we can come over to Quiet Storm here and just by going in no order, Most of these you can just play in order of the keys and you'll have a nice song. Check this out. So there we have it. How cool is that? Two new menus for the expressive chords device. And as I mentioned, I'm gonna keep adding chord sets for that device over at the Patreon. All you have to do is hit join. You can join for free and you'll have access to those chord sets. If you do want to support the channel, feel free to join any paid tier. I think there's about 300 posts on my Patreon. So there's definitely at least 250 devices, instruments, templates, and resources that you can download. I also have tiers for one-to-one -one tuition and ghostwriting available over there as well. Thank you so much for swinging by. Consider subscribing, share this amongst your friends, and I'll see you next week.